Asisa, the Association of Savings and Investments, had a change of leadership one year ago from Leon Comfer to Basisa Gia. So I decided it's a good time to catch up with Basisa, CEO, and hear what is happening at the organization. Basisa, thank you for your time. Let's um, start with a bit of feedback on Asisa's year, that's now 2022, which was then also your first year in charge. Maybe share a bit um, of the good, some of the bad, and a lot of the interesting. Well, the good news is that it's uh, one year since I took over, um, and so I celebrate uh, the year with uh, having survived it. Um, on the great side of things, 2022 was critical in the sense that we came out of lockdown and emergency uh, crisis management, uh, and we now return to work to some form of normality, which uh, I think is a great thing. Mm. Um, so aside from my being the new CEO of ASISA, we also come out of lockdown. On, on the bad side, we, we have... Uh, Inflation that's creeping up and unemployment, those are two rather uh, impactful uh, statistics that we concern ourselves with. Mm -hmm. And on the food front, you would know that it's not only on the inflation side, but also supply given uh, wars across the world that uh, influence uh, uh, food availability and, and the prices. Inflation is of concern uh, in that anytime it's a, above our three to six range, uh, we have concerns that um, not all of us will receive the right nutrition. Uh, and to the extent that uh, inflation tagged with uh, high unemployment, which is another concern we have, uh, we have a combination that can have uh, really unintended uh, consequences. 2022 was also the year where we had some flooding and for our, our industry, it was great that our, our member companies were able to honor um, those. Um, but moving into 2023, um, the concern is that uh, through increased blackouts or load shedding, uh, the insurers uh, along with their relationship of reinsurers are, are going to have some challenges as to how to navigate this 2022, I think, is a year of contradictions in the sense that uh, we made it into 2023, and albeit that we are here, we lost some of our people we, we loved and who are family, uh, and we're trying to bring normality uh, into our own lives and trying to return to work. Uh, our GDP growth uh, would be impacted by uh, the last uh, two, three years of lockdown, so we are all hurrying ourselves to to have a greater impact on GDP growth so that we can prof, prosper as a, as, a, as a country. So I think that for me is what 2022 was. Um, it's busy times. There is no doubt about that. Um, Pusisa, please remind us what your offering to members are and what does it mean to be an ASISA member? And maybe you can also see what you've seen um, in the membership space. What is happening? What's the trends? So we have 123 members, uh, voting, non-voting, affiliates and associates, and those are people who are part of the savings and investment industry. We have plans to grow that number. Our focus uh, is to be reflective of our demographic. There are imbalances, uh, some easy to explain, some difficult. Uh, and the focal point for uh, the future will be that we uh, attract membership uh, from uh, women-owned uh, uh, members uh, and also uh, black-owned. Uh, that is more reflective of our society and also speaks to the demographic of our client base, uh, more reflective of our population. And that's going to be a push. What it means to be a member is that uh, we are able to sit down and talk about industry challenges. Uh, the, the key objective is to promote savings and investment industry. A simpler way to explain that is to grow the market. Uh, if you consider uh, that we, we ranged between six and 10 trillion uh, in terms of uh, assets under management, those from the life companies and also from uh, typically asset managers, 
that in itself sp speaks of the difficulty of our market conditions. Mm -hmm. But what it means to be a member is that we we are able to respond to uh, regulators who gazette uh, proposed changes uh, and think how those changes will impact the, the marketplace. Uh, consideration will be beyond ourselves as members, but for our client base and the population at large, and what it will mean for the regulators in terms of, uh, of how they monitor and, and, and police that. So we speak as one voice. Uh, we have an interesting membership that uh, irrespective of your size of uh, uh, market capitalization or assets, um, you will have one member, one vote. And that does allow for us to be able to uh, consider all uh, inputs, uh, no matter the size, because it's not one size fits all. We are all in a competitive environment. So um, we have that opportunity uh, as a member, you have the opportunity to actually have your voice heard and to uh, make a, a valuable contribution on behalf of the industry. And that's what it means to be a member. What what lies ahead for ASISA in 2023 and beyond? And I know growing your pool um, is one of obviously of the of of the things that you have mentioned. What lies ahead? The one thing I've learned, uh, and especially through COVID, is uh, change is constant. So we're not sure what lies ahead. The anomaly or oddity in that is that uh, the very nature of our membership. Uh, our membership consists of companies that plan for an unpredictable, unknown future. Um, as we talked about the floods in KZN that we responded to, we talked about COVID-19, uh, coming out of COVID-19, uh, where we had a number of claims, uh, some the ultimate claim in, in terms of death, but also uh, from a medical uh, side uh, in terms of people having insurance and being covered. Uh, our industry, by design, in terms of our members, uh, plans for an unpredictable future. And we uh, must have the strength within our members in terms of how they manage their books to be able to honor um, um, those claims uh, for the life insurers and for the uh, asset managers to be able to invest, save and invest on behalf of members uh, and when I say members on behalf of their own clients uh, mm. to plan for the future, whether it's uh, education uh, or to buy a home or, or car, um, we have uh, through our members investment products and savings products that can plan for an unpredictable future. And those plans uh, originate from, you know, knowing your key circumstance as, as a client. So I think 2023 uh, will serve as a year of continued unpredictability. Uh, it started strong in terms of uh, financial markets, but we we see some volatility there, and that could just be the nerves um, of, of the past years. So I I cannot make a prediction for 2023 other than the, the, the surprises will continue, and, and you need to plan for surprises in a way that you actually benefit from them. It's that um, age old saying that the only constant in life is change. So, yeah. and that um, uh, it's not, it's not timing the market, it's time in the market. <laughs> <laughs> that one's too relevant to you. Well, stay, stay, stay involved, uh, stay a part of it, and plan for your future. And I, I think. Kusisa, what do you see as the biggest challenges we face as, as an industry? <sighs> South Africa has a low savings environment, and without saving, you, you don't really naturally progress to investments. Mm -hmm. You know, a financial planner will tell you that you need an emergency fund of three months of your, of your take home. So even if you consider that you, you are saving at a rate of 10%, it's going to take 10 months to save one month's uh, uh, salary. So it will take 30 months, uh, over two years, for you uh, to save up for that emergency fund. And it's a discipline. It's something that uh, financial planners will tell you, you need to pay yourself first. And, and what that means is that 
before the debit orders and stop orders come through, you need to have set aside money to save. Um, you need to have set aside money once you progress beyond savings to invest. So financial planning is 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 key, and and that planning is not just for individuals and households, but it's also for companies. We've noticed in in the last two three years that the worst can happen, and you need to have. Um, a surplus you need to have a means by which you can weather the worst and unthinkable things mm -hmm. so uh, i think that that's the world we live in uh, in the same breath i will say that people have a greater love for life than before we we all came out from not being allowed to walk at any given time from not uh, not having the freedom of movement by virtue of of uh, trying to ensure our survival. So I think uh, life is going to be more impactful and full of extremes. But if you, if you plan accordingly or you, you, you think about what really makes you happy, uh, you will find a balance that uh, is, is a balance that will keep you living longer and happier. Yeah, I most certainly agree with you. I think we really appreciate things that we've taken for granted for so long, a lot more now. Um, a last word to the IFA News audience, who is obviously the advisors, the planners, and the bigger financial services industry. Advisors have it hard. Um, I say this personally. They have it hard, uh, similar to teaching or nursing. They are professions that are there that are not naturally obvious, and yet they are the bricks, the foundation from which everything can, can be built. So my sense is that uh, advisors uh, will become more important in future in, in, in assisting with people planning. Uh, we do have apps that allow for people to, to plan, and we do that through smart about money in collaboration with, with uh, a number of, of stakeholders. But I think that for your audience, um, there, there has to be that resilience to sometimes being ignored in terms of the importance you bring to people's lives. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, having the ability to, to help someone plan and uh, teach them uh, lessons on, on how to keep the discipline will lead that that client uh, into a position where they have planned according to what is important to their lives. And I think that I, my parting word to your audience is uh, they must keep up the hope and the strength and the resilience of being in this industry to assist people to plan better. Mm -hmm. uh, it may be a thankless job. Uh, I mean, there was a time I thought of studying medicine uh, and, and my father took me to a hospital uh, at month end, <laughs> to a government hospital at month end in the, in the trauma unit, I think. And uh, uh, I had an experience I had not expected as a 17 or 18 year old. And the outcome of it was, he said, it has to be a calling. And I think yeah. for financial advisors, they must see it as a calling because people don't want to need you. So when they come to you, it's not always with a smiley face, but they need you. And I think that the profession must, must stand strong and understand their importance, just like nurses, teachers, doctors, financial advisors assist with planning people's futures. Yeah, that's, that's a, that is a great, great message. Busisa, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. I know you are running from one meeting to the other. So thank you very much for, for giving me some of your time. And I hope we can do this a little bit more often. So my absolute pleasure. And thank you for your invitation and uh, give me the opportunity to speak to you and your audience. I wish you well and a prosperous 2023. Thank you very much. Precisa, on the same to you. Um, this is Rianet White, FI News Editor, and I was speaking to Precisa Gia Asisa, CEO.